Yeah, so like, I found this really shitty Forbes article, it's called Super Mario Fantasy 64 should respect its players and add an easy mode. Uh, I mean like, I think this dude fundamentally misunderstands the game. Mario Fantasy 64 isn't your little baby bitch Minecraft Fortnite, okay? It's a super serious video game for professional video gamers, and if you're not a professional video gamers, then you really just need to like, die, because you're stupid, and you're probably gay. The first thing that you need to understand about Super Mario Fantasy 64 is the fact that this is a massive game. It has about 183 stars, which makes it much larger than the original. Now here's the other thing. No matter what star you get, the game does not pull you out of the level. You just keep right on going. I've talked about this briefly in other reviews, but this is immensely convenient, especially for a hack the size of this. Take this scenario for instance. You're trying to get the 100 coin star. Now let's say in your travels you find another star. Now your first instinct would be to grab it, but if you were to do that in many other hacks, you'd get kicked out and all your 100 coin progress would be undone. Not in this hack, it won't. There is no slowing of your momentum. You get a star and immediately you can just run for the next one. It's very convenient and keeps the flow of the game going. Now here's the other, other thing. The original Super Mario 64 and naturally most ROM hacks have a hub world from which to access all the worlds. Well, not in Mario Fantasy. This game kind of has a Banjo-Tooie thing going on. What happens is every level connects to at least one other level through different exits. This gives the game the impression of a grand adventure, like you have to cross the treacherous swamp to get to the high mountains, to get to the beach, to come back around to the start where you can enter this part of the level. Then there's that one level up at the treetops where if you look down, you can actually see the forest level from earlier. It's really cool. The only issue with this is that it makes navigation very confusing. This method of going between levels can really complicate things, especially considering how massive each of the levels are. Seriously, some of these are just huge. But on the bright side, the creator of this hack is also a very talented artist and drew up this super detailed map of the entire world. It's actually very useful considering how massive the levels are. Now naturally the game is not mission based because of the way the levels are arranged. The big issue with this is that this means there's no documentation of which exact stars you have gotten in the exact levels, which means you have to keep it in your head or do it manually. In my case, I've been recording pretty much every minute of gameplay that I put into this game, so I actually do technically have it documented. So that's good for me, but I don't imagine most people would be doing that. So you're otherwise out of luck. It wouldn't be quite as bad if the levels weren't so gargantuan. Sometimes they're even borderline labyrinthine, which makes it even worse. Needless to say, the game is challenging. Now, for the most part, a lot of the difficulty comes from exploration and tricky jump sequences, which is pretty normal. Then, of course, you have the Bowser fights. Now, a common theme in ROM hacks is to make boss fights more challenging by turning it into a satanic bullet hell clusterfuck, which can really start to tread the fine line between grotesque brutality and complete fuck. Most of the game is reasonably challenging, though. While some parts do require an intense amount of precision and will literally kill you if you aren't quite on point. In fact, one level in particular made me extremely angry, and then another one made me somehow even more angry. It's not on the level of something like Super Mario 74, but if you're bad at the game, you'd better get good. And I believe you can do it. Now on the bright side, when you die, you don't get kicked out of the level, which means if you were going for 100 coins, you still keep them if you die. Which is important, because you are most definitely going to die. Unless you're some kind of psychotic Olympic level Mario 64 speedrunner. If you are, maybe you could explain to me if there's some kind of sixth sense to be able to tell when there's an invisible wall in the area. That would be amazingly helpful. Yeah, this game has invisible walls, but for games of this size and scale, that's something you pretty much have to expect. When you're being as ambitious of this, you're going to miss some things. But aside from that, and sometimes the camera, the game is more than stable. The level design is pretty great. Each level gives the impression of a cohesive world. You start out in this small bob village that has a forest on one end and then a beach, and then the beach has a motherfucking arcade in there. And they got Donkey Kong. Now that's the real shit. Fuck Donkey Kong, shit game. Then you got Bowser's Castle, which literally has an entire room full of blood and chunks of flesh hanging from spikes and hooks and shit. It's actually pretty messed up, and very far from what you'd expect from a Mario game. 
There's also these tortured, demented chain chomps who seem to be cyborgs of a sort or something like that. There are sort of explanations for all this. The game does have something of a story, and Mario himself actually canonically speaks in this game. Which is a little weird. Whenever you talk to someone, the text box shows who is talking, and they have actual conversations. Mario is actually a complete dickhead in this game. Like, he has a respectful conversation with maybe two people in the entire game, and the rest he's just being a prick. It's hilarious. The levels are easily the most impressive part of the game. They are massive and very detailed, for the most part. There are the occasional levels in which almost everything is the same color, but even these typically make up for that by being structurally appealing. Graphically, the game is very nice because of its very distinctive style. It's different from the original, it's going for a slightly more balanced look between the cartoony look of the original and a more realistic style. One of the biggest triumphs of this game would have to be the music. There is music from all sorts of games, and almost all of them are very quality remixes. They even got music from Duke Nukem. And Mortal Kombat. They even got fucking Metallica in there. That's insane. I can't believe they actually got Metallica to do the music for this game. That's unbelievable. But you know what the best part of the music is? It's the fact that every single level has a sign that tells you what the original song's name is. I think that all ROM hacks should do that. I play so many ROM hacks with great music that I don't recognize and I can never find it, so I just have to assume it's from Toho. But here, they tell you everything. It's great. This game is probably one of the best hacks I've played in a while. The idea of interconnectivity between all the levels gives the world a really great sense of unity. The sheer size and scale of the game will mean that you will get a ton of mileage out of this one. And you'll also discover a lot of amazing video game music that isn't from Toho. You'll be living the dream. And besides, who wouldn't want to see Doomguy's Mario cosplay? <laughs>